Welcome to the Football Express podcast on Monday the 7th of November and we're going to start today with the Champions League draw that was made today and I'll just run you through all the matches first so we have RB Leipzig vs Man City Club Bruges vs Benfica Liverpool vs Real Madrid AC Milan vs Tottenham Frankfurt vs Napoli Borussia Dortmund vs Chelsea Inter Milan vs Porto and PSG vs Bayern Munich and uh, I laughed a bit at the end there for that last match because it's um it's another tough match for Messi again in the round of 16 I think he's played um PSG uh Barcelona no no he hasn't played Barcelona uh, I think he's played PSG, Bayern Munich, and they had another tough match um, when he was at Barca. So it's not looking good for PSG at the moment. But um, all these matches are scheduled to be played in February. So as as uh, you know, in football, a lot can change. We have the World Cup coming up soon, and. It's unprecedented, so who knows what could happen, um, how the teams could look. But um, two really big matches there, Liverpool versus Real Madrid and PSG versus Bayern Munich. Um, again, like I was saying, Liverpool, if, if the matches were played right now, you'd fancy Real Madrid to go through. But three, four months, like three months time, uh, who knows what the injury situations will be looking like. Uh, you'd expect Liverpool to have less injuries, but you never know. They might be in the same situation. So I think those matches are going to be pretty even. And hopefully, I'm hoping that PSG can uh, beat Bayern Munich. And um, let's see what else have we got. I think you'd expect Man City to beat Leipzig. Um, Club Bruges vs Benfica should be a good match. Um, AC Milan vs Tottenham, another one. Um, I think you'd probably fancy AC if both if both teams have all their players fit. I think you'd probably just fancy AC Milan. Uh, Frankfurt vs Napoli, or you'd go with Napoli. Dortmund vs Chelsea, I think. Um, I think Chelsea. Um, should be going through there and Inter Milan vs Porto I think that's another good tie so one two big teams are going out anyway from PSG vs Bayern and uh, Liverpool vs Real Madrid and um, got a big match in the Europa League as well Barcelona vs Man United so that could that could be a Champions League match really but again who knows the state of the clubs uh, in February um, I think with PK leaving I think Barcelona might be after another centre back or another defender um, so it's going to be interesting that match as well but I would say if both teams have all their players fit I would expect Barcelona to go through and um, I'm going to try hopefully to get tickets and maybe go to the match at the camp now if I'm lucky enough. So yeah, uh, Champions League um, draw has been made, and I'm hoping my preference is for Man City <laughs> because of a uh, Guardiola or PSG because of uh, Messi to win it. And uh, just on Messi as well, I was watching his documentary um, on BBC iPlayer. It's a good watch. For those that haven't watched it, uh, maybe get a little bit more insight into how he came to Barcelona and his um, his early years there. So yeah, and just um, a little note before I say because I've just got it written down here. So before I forget, um, Julian Lopetegui is going to be the Wolves manager after the World Cup. And when I heard the news, I was just thinking to myself. He was um just come from Seville. So he's living in Seville. And then previously he was at Real Madrid. So he was at in living in Madrid. 
and now he's going to be living in a well, I mean, probably Wolverhampton, which is um, it's probably going to be a bit of a culture shock to him. But he's a good manager, Lopetegui. Wolves are in a bit of trouble at the moment. Um, don't know how much money they're going to give to him in January. But he's a good manager and I think he'll do well there. Style of play, I'm not the biggest fan of the way he plays but he's, um, he's a good manager. And uh, some other news that came out today was the sacking of Ralph Hazenhuto from Southampton. Um, Southampton lost at home on the weekend 4-1 to Newcastle which probably was the final nail in the coffin and um, it's a bit difficult to judge with this one because obviously I, th I think Southampton are in 18th position so if you just looking at that you'd say the manager isn't doing well but they're, they're a funny team Southampton in terms of investment and um, I think the three backroom staff left before the start of the season or just when the season started. So I'm not sure what, what the plan is. They brought some young players as well from Man City. So whether the long-term plan... Um, so it's hard to say how good of a manager he is or isn't. Obviously he had some really big defeats. And you thought that his time was up when his team suffered those massive defeats. But to be fair... the they reacted quite well from them. Um, but yeah, it's difficult to say. I'm pretty sure he'll get, he'll get another job. Probably maybe in uh, back in Germany. So uh, good luck to him wherever he goes. And it'll be interesting to see who Southampton do bring in. I forgot the name of the manager that they in talks with today. Um, I think it might be a Welsh manager from one of the lower leagues. But um, they in talks with him. But his name, off the top of my head, I forgot his name. So let's just go over the weekend results. Some of the weekend results. So Man City 2, Fulham 1. Um, Cancelo was sent off. I think in about the 25th minute or something like that maybe. And uh, watching it back, I'm not sure. It's, it's, it's a bit of a tough one really because you could say he's just shoulder to shoulder. He's barging him out of the way but... Um, Man City I didn't watch the match it was a 3 o'clock kickoff and apparently Man City had a, performed brilliantly um, De Bruyne and uh, Bernardo Silva were excellent and um, Haaland came off the bench to score the winning penalty and he just about scored it as well but I don't think he cares as he said it. I think in one of his interviews he doesn't care how it goes in so Man City with them um, obviously down to 10 men it's a big result. That was a big result. And Leeds 4, Bournemouth 3. I thought uh, Jesse Marsh's time might have been up there. I think Bournemouth were winning 3-1 at, at one stage. But Leeds uh, made a great comeback. As I um, thought the last goal, especially maybe Bournemouth could have defended that better. But um, big, big win for, for Leeds. Um, Everton 0 Leicester 2 I think uh, when I was watching the match like there was a stat up that Everton have scored the least goals in the league or had the, the least shots on target so obviously it's going to be um, it's going to be difficult to win matches if you're not creating chances and then obviously if you're not finishing chances as well Calvert-Lewin I think may have gone off injured with a hamstring injury as well so that's going to be a big blow to them and um Maybe he's out of the England reckoning as well for the World Cup. Maybe he had a slight chance to get in there. Um, Tielemans volley for the goal as well. He might be the best volley in world football. And his goal rivaled probably um, another goal that was in the Betis versus Seville match. Uh, which I'll talk about in a little while. And Tottenham versus Liverpool. So Tottenham won, Liverpool 2. Tottenham with the slow start again, which has become um, indicative of their season, really. And uh, I think it's poor defending again, really, for both goals. Um, the first goal as well, Salah with way too much time on the ball to have a touch and then get his shot off in the box. And the Trent foul on Sessignon, I'm not sure how they didn't give a penalty for that. 
I don't know if they went to VAR. I don't think they did. But Sessignon's in front of Trent. And Trent has like put his that kind of elbow forearm into his back. So I'm not sure how that isn't a penalty. For me, that's 100%. Has to be a penalty. Um, so I just say Liverpool got away with a big, big one there, and I think that's a big victory for Liverpool as well. Their first away win of the season, so a much needed victory. Uh, Kulisevsky when he came on looked like to make a big, big difference for Tottenham. Um, Tottenham, well, he didn't start. Son was out. He's had his operation. I think it was a fractured uh, eye socket or something. So he's uh, touch and goal for the World Cup. And Richarlison is out as well. So Tottenham, no real threat in behind against Liverpool. And big, big, much needed win for Liverpool. Um, I haven't got Man United's uh, defeat to Aston Villa on here. But it was a big victory. Uh, Emery's first victory. As Aston Villa manager against Man United. And uh, Man United have got an excellent record, I think, at Villa Park. Uh, Ronaldo was the captain. And watching just that match of the day, there was massive gaps in the United midfield. And I'm not sure we played in the 4-2-3-1, uh, whether it was Casemiro and Eriksen played in there. But there was huge, huge gaps for Man United. Uh, so... That was a that was a um, bit of a I don't know shock because obviously with the new manager you're expecting that bounce but it wasn't a good performance I think Eric Ten Hag said as well we can't play at that standard and uh, expect to win so massive victory for Aston Villa as well Emre is uh, is another one he's a good manager um, I think he'll do well for Villa. And uh, let's move on to La Liga. So it was a Seville derby, Betis won a Seville one. Three red cards in this match. Um, not sure if there was another sending off from the staff. One of the staff members got sent off as well. But if you haven't seen the goal, uh, it was an absolute rocket from Goodell. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Hit that ball as hard as you can hit a ball, really. And he nearly scored a stunning volley uh, after that as well, similar to Tiedemann's volley. And then he also had a chance at the end as well from a pullback to win the match. Uh, I think it was just inside the box and he at the like, centrally. Maybe he could have got it um, into one of the corners. So he had a chance and at the end of the match he was very, very disappointed um, in himself. I think he uh, thought he could have done better. Uh, Barcelona 2, Almeria 1, PK actually started this match, his last match at the new Camp, or should I say Camp now, I'm not sure if he's going to start at Osasuna tomorrow, but if he, he definitely was his last match at the Camp now, uh, started, uh, Barca played alright, Lewandowski missed the penalty, and it was... Um, it was a nice farewell for PK at the end of the end of the match, but just seeing his farewell, it just brought back a bit of taste in your mouth. Regards how Messi left as well, uh, and the send off that he should have had. So PK emotional, crying, saying that he will be back as well, and I'm pretty sure that he will be. So it's a good send off for PK. Barcelona, I think. With Real Madrid are playing today in the Madrid, there's a derby. Uh, Real Vallecano versus Real Madrid starting at 8 o'clock UK time. So I think Barcelona ahead by one point now um, at the top of the table. So they're still in it. I think Barcelona in the title race in Spain. I think they'll get better as the season goes on. They just need that luck with injury. So I think they could still win it because uh, you have to remember they've played a classic already. So they have. They've lost to Real Madrid. So if they beat Real Madrid in the return match. And they start improving. I think that would be a good season for them. Even though they got out of the Champions League. If they win the La Liga title. I think that would be a big big success for them. Um, 
because obviously they're still in transition and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, Champions League draw. What else have we got? I think there's like e Barcelona playing tomorrow. EFL Cup matches. Gareth Southgate's picking the team this Thursday, I think, for the World Cup. And uh, so probably next Monday will be our next podcast. Unless something uh, something drastic happens in the world of football. Other than that, uh, thank you for listening. Take care and we'll see you soon. Goodbye.